Silver Springs, Nevada, <laughs> the home of the longest continuous burning tire fire anywhere in the continental United States. We have the not so lovely Aaron on line one. Hey, hey Aaron, what's, what's up? up? And Aaron, I got your picture of. I your... have little bells for you guys today instead of big gongs. Little <laughs> bells since you don't know how to handle the gong. Oh, you know what? I got the pictures of the gong, and you were right. It did sound nice. You know what? And they, I mean, tell the truth, they look kind of medieval. They look like they're going to, oh, my God, what is going to come out of those? And they're really kind of soothing the way they ring. Yeah, uh, they, they look like and, something a steampunk would do. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that's what somebody else said uh, uh, to me. That Oh, that looks like steampunk art. And I was like, what in the world is that? But, you it's, know, hey, every yeah. generation has their thing. Yeah. And they were um, nice enough hey, to share that. You know that what? what? On Friday the 13th, I have to quote Albert Einstein. Oh, okay. What Creativity is imagination having fun. And I suggest everybody out there in Radio Land, go create a great weekend and have some fun. Right on. That's a good, yeah, good word. Yeah, that's one of my favorite Albert Einstein uh, 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 sayings is create creativity is imagination having fun. He he also gave us the one about technology, which is kind of coming true if you think about it. Technology is actually getting becoming smarter than us, and, and I don't call it a smartphone. I call it a make you stupid phone. I that's agree. What they do <laughs> when, when when they start correcting everything. You sound so dumb. I know. Uh, unbelievable. And I have hey, to go to uh, somebody under 30 to uh, help me with my... Uh, you know what? When you got to ask a 7-year-old how to figure out your phone, you got, we, we got problems. Well, we got problems. <laughs> you know, I, I want to talk about a couple herbs today. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody remembers, like, Marco Polo. Marco Polo wasn't actually going to China to get pasta. Marco Polo was looking for drug routes, trade routes is what they were called at the time, and things that we grow now, things that we take for granted in our kitchen cabinets, such as nutmeg, cinnamon, basil, rosemary, these were all medicinal back in the 1300s, 1200s, whatever, you know, these were all used for medicinal purposes. The cooking part of this came in later, but that's what Columbus was actually looking for. He was looking for new trade routes to get drugs. Nutmeg has numbing properties. Cinnamon, numbing properties. Same with cloves, and they were used like in dental work and stuff like that, uh, uh, anesthesia. But let's talk about basil and rosemary for a minute. These are herbs we all know very well as a culinary herb. We use them in cooking. Uh, uh, one of the best meals you'll ever get is a pork loin rolled in garlic and uh, rosemary. They, they come out just fantastic. But both of these herbs have some very interesting medicinal properties. Basil. And I have used this, it's been tested and tried numerous times. Basil, you can make a tea, and, and most of your herbs, when you make a tea, they're kind of bitter. Uh, so you cut them with a, a type of mint, whatever your favorite mint is, whether it be chocolate mint, orange mint, spearmint, peppermint, whatever. You use a mint because it's a very sweet herb and it has natural sugars and stuff like that in it. And, and, and it, it takes that bitterness, it cuts it out, but rosemary, can be used, and both of these, the women are going to love these today, both of these herbs can be used for stomach ailments, uh, basil, morning sickness, it, it, it helps, and when I say proven and tried, every time a gal comes along, I, I've had secretaries that, that were pregnant, I give them this little spearmint basil tea, and they come back and want more. It works, it calms the stomach, it, it, it helps ease the morning sickness, but one of the great properties rosemary has in a tea cramping. It helps with the cramps, and we all know what happens uh, during the, that goofy time of the month, as they call it. Uh, but uh, women get cramps, menstrual cramps, and it helps alleviate the menstrual cramps and uh, uh, helps with your digestive tract and stuff. Same with nutmeg and cinnamon. They'll, they'll both uh, uh, help with the digestive tract and, and different things, and they actually help fight certain types of prostate, colon cancers, and stuff like that. So there, there's your herbology 101 to, uh, for the weekend, if you will. You know what helps the guy uh, that time of the month? Well, A beer? Bourbon. Bourbon. Yeah. Bourbon? <laughs> Jim Beam? Jim Beam. <laughs> my my right three there, favorite uh, guys, Jim, Johnny, and Jose. Well, I think there was a guy that uh, sang about them. Uh, uh, 
He, he drank alone with his dear old granddad. Mm-hmm. Old granddad. Uh, uh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, had his good friend Buddy Weiser come over or Who's something that like John that. John Thoroughgood? He, uh, George Thoroughgood. George Thoroughgood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, one of the greatest shows I ever saw was Jay Giles, George Thoroughgood, and the Rolling Stones. No kidding. What a wow. combo. That, wow. they were at the Cal Palace 1981. Uh, uh, and, and this was the period of time when I was working with Bill Graham for Zen, so I would, you know, help set the stage up and do all that stuff. But at the end, I would go get a, a, a place like in the nosebleed seats because I had this big 600 millimeter zoom and I would sit up there in the nosebleed seats and take photographs of these concerts and then on the, on the weekends I would, uh, Saturday morning I had this little route I would go down in uh, uh, San Jose, go to all the hardwood uh, uh, furniture manufacturing places and places that built uh, uh, stuff out of hardwood. I'd go through their dumpster and get all their scraps and go make picture frames for all the pictures I took at the concerts. And nice. they go sit in a parking lot once a month and sell them. Yeah. A little entrepreneurship there. And that's what hey, got the grateful. That was how I made a living the first three years I went down to the Bay Area. I, uh, the first summer I got a job on the boardwalk. They gave me a stick to pick papers up. I slept under the boardwalk, flirted with all the girls all day. And, and then I started doing this Bill Graham Presents thing. And uh, uh, it was great. I, I mean, I had a great time. That, that was how I made a living for like three years down there. Wow. And that's before you became a deadhead? <laughs> Well, something like that. I don't know if I ever really was a deadhead, but... Uh, <laughs> it sounds exactly uh, what the deadheads would do. I know. You know, they you know, you know what? So, I, I, I knew a lot of those uh, folks down there. I, some of the mellowest people you ever made, meet, but boy, are they obsessed <laughs> with following the Grateful Dead around the world. They were, yeah, they were. Holy Toledo. And you wonder yeah, why they're they, so calm. Yeah, why are they so calm? They're mellow. Ah, uh, <laughs> well, they medicate. Yes, self-medication. No, and, now, and now it's legal. <laughs> but not in California. Uh, not for recreational use, for medicating. Yeah, ev- yeah, everyone yeah, everyone has but, a card in California. Come on, Jim. Yeah, just about, yeah. And, and you know what? I honestly believe that they're going to be the next state that legalizes recreational use mm-hmm. uh, with, with, with everything that, uh, 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 oh, gosh, I got them from uh, Brown. Jerry Brown did uh, uh, recently with the, uh, all, all the regulating and everything on the... Uh, medical end of it. Well, they even have uh, doctor's websites that, uh, you know, that they can write you prescriptions for medical marijuana, for headaches and foot aches and back yeah. aches. And, I mean, you know, they, 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 I guess legally they're not advertising, but they are putting stuff out like on Facebook and on websites where, you know, if you need it, uh, here's where you go to get it. So, mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 one of the other things that I'm seeing, and I don't know if anybody's brought this up yet or not, but... Fantasy leagues. Yeah, I many of your them. attorney generals, uh, many of the attorney generals are saying, "Hey, this is gambling, and you cannot do it." Well, it is, and especially. Do you see the thing online that they took off? Oh, of? yeah, they, they had to. You know, the, the big winners that you see there on TV. I won three hundred and five thousand dollars and only played two hundred. Yeah. That was an employee yeah. of, the, of the business, and he had all. He knew all the. Uh, the wagers coming in and all the picks coming in, so he had inside information. That's how he won, and they paid him off. Of course they did. But most places, if you have a contest, wow. employees and relatives and stuff like that are not eligible. Yeah, they're not eligible to win. But he, yeah. they were advertising. And, and, and the reality, the reality is, I mean, we're, we're in Nevada and we've grown up with gambling. It was part of our lifestyle. But the reality is, I don't care what it is, a pool is a form of gambling. You put 50 cents in for a square to win $20. That's gambling. Right. When you make a wager at odds, it's called gambling. Whether those odds are even money or 100 to 1, I don't care what it is. When you put money down with the expectation of doing well and winning, that is gambling. And, and these people want to argue this. The Fantasy Kings uh, or Draft Kings and Fan Club and all these, these websites that do this fantasy stuff, they want to argue, oh, no, we're not gambling. Well, no, I'm sorry. Yes, you are, in a big sense. And somebody, there's money involved. Somebody's making money, too. There's billions of dollars involved in that. Billions would yeah. be. So, well, yeah, Aaron, 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 oh, Uncle Sam, he wants his issue, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And, and, Aaron, we are coming up on the bottom of the hour, so how do we get a hold of you at Alladay LLC? 
Hey, folks, we had a gorgeous sunrise out here. Again, a very calm day. It's going to be in the uh, up to the 50s. It's warming up a little bit. 775-230-9915. You want one of these custom wind chimes? We do come on out and bang the gong, as they say. WWW. <laughs> Alliday LLC on the website. Hey, folks, forget Friday the 13th. Do it. Albert Einstein says, use your creativity and have a great weekend. Let's all be safe out there. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, all right, Aaron. We love you, man. That's Aaron out there in Silver Springs where the sheep are leery. Let's go from Silver Springs to Wall Street with an opening stock market report. We have Ken Roberts. Hey, Ken. What's, What's up? up?